evolution of a project. A while ago, well, not that long ago, I made a batch of circuit boards that were designed to fit into picture frame and had LEDs in the front and they had surface mount resistors in the back. And the idea was it was basically sort of techno art, if you will. It was powered by a USB cable and it just had a matrix LEDs in the front. It looked pretty good. And I offered some of the circuit boards to my Patreon supporters and they said, oh, it's a shame it's not got the through-all resistors because the surface mount ones are just that little bit trickier to solder. And I thought, well, you know, that's a good point. So fast forward to this version, which has through-hole resistors. And the resistors can be mounted from the back or the front. In this instance, I'm going to mount them from the front. And that just makes it easier. But it's also got the surface mount positions so that you can have the choice of through-hole or surface mount resistors. And I'm going to make one of these boards up right now, but I'm going to be using some LEDs that just arrived from China. And these are standard flashing LEDs. Now, in the past, the flashing LEDs I used to get were just basically, instead of actually being what I'd call flashing and just going on and off in a nice 50-50 ratio, uh, like these ones do, which is nice. Let me pair one up and show you. So it cycles on and off on a con pretty much a 50-50 ratio. They used to just go blink, 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 blink. And uh, I think these ones are better. And the oh, it kind of fits because the inspiration for redoing this project, because I, I, I did this ages ago on a much larger scale, was a video on YouTube showing the pre-show scene setting of the Fast and Furious ride at Universal Orlando, I think it is. It's the cutback one, where one of the performers is uh, interacting with uh, the actors on the screen. And in the background, they've got, this is the, what they call the war room. It's got all the computers in it. And they've got some racks and they're absolutely smothered in blue LEDs. And I was looking at them and looking to see, because it was quite an interesting sort of scrolling pattern, but it wasn't actually scrolling. And I reckoned it was just flashing LEDs. And I thought the best way to find that out is to actually just build a board with blue flashing LEDs. And that's what this project's going to be. So this was inspired by the set designer of Universal Studios then, technically, I guess. Once again, the circuit board is designed to go into a standard 6x4 inch uh, picture frame. In fact, it's just this exact same outline as the previous one, just with a rearrangement of the components. Um, I'm going to power it with USB again. So all I need is the resistors, the USB cable, and the LEDs. So right now I'm going to start preparing these bulk resistors, because there's quite a lot of resistors involved. Uh, the way I trim these resistors, incidentally, I'm going to use this forming tool. Somebody was asking, quite a few people were asking actually, why didn't I just feed it into the forming tool like this and uh, just keep cropping my way through them? Well, it works to a degree, uh, but those leads at the side actually then start sort of fouling it and making the resistor misalign because they kind of snag on the side of the metalwork. So I'm not going to do that. It doesn't work. Instead, I'm going to cut bulk resistors off this with a pair of scissors, which is what I normally do. Sometimes I fold the thing over and then cut through multiple layers at once. But I just find that the fastest way of cropping out resistors. So I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to crop these LEDs down. Just basically going to chop them down to length, just to make it easier for soldering the back of the circuit board. And once I've cropped and shaped all these LEDs, I'll be back and we can put them in and I'll solder them and then we'll see what it looks like. So I'll be back shortly. The component leads are all cut. I've got the printed circuit board in the ISIL assembly frame, and I'm just going to start placing the resistors in, but I won't torture you by showing putting them all in. But I'll put all the resistors in first, and then I'll put the foam backing on, then I'll solder them, and then I'll put the LEDs in because they're a taller component. I can't put them all in at once because the uh, LEDs would keep the foam off the resistors. So I'll just keep plodding away with this and, uh, well, I'll just actually speed the footage up while I do this because otherwise it could be very time consuming. So uh, I'm just going to put the resistors in, uh, solder them, put the LEDs in, solder them, and then we'll be back to actually test the circuit board.
Well, that wasn't too bad. That was actually quite nice to put together compared to the uh, surface mount one, I suppose. Ultimately, if you're set up for surface mount, it's going to be easier. Uh, time to get the picture frame into the action then. So I'm going to make a hole in the back of the picture frame so we can stuff a cable through. I'm going to get rid of the glass. The glass can be used for other applications. It's quite a good source of a piece of glass if you ever just need a rectangle of glass. Picture frames are perfect for that. It's worth buying the picture frame just for the bit of glass, but in this instance, we don't need the glass. It is being removed. Note that uh, it'll have quite sharp edges. You can take a file to that outdoors and it'll smooth it off. I shall pop that in the bin. I shall pop the glass on another bit of glass under here. So, how's this going to go? Uh, this metal clip at the top for hanging the picture. I'll leave it in situ, but uh, it's not really encroaching down into the circuit board too much. <clears throat> Something I didn't mention, the design of the circuit board, you could put the resistors on the other side. It's fine to actually sit on this side and solder them from this side and then crop the leads flush at the back. You can also paint the uh, front of the board. I used to paint a lot of my circuit boards that I did for sort of artistic purposes in the past. Um, one of my favourite finishes was this sort of sparkly metallic finish. Very nice. But what I need right now is a hole for the cable to come in. So I'm going to choose an area that's not got spiky metal bits. And I'm going to make a wee mark there. Where is a pen? There's a pen. So I'm going to put it slightly off centre, put it about there. I'm going to drill that with a 4mm or just over 3 eighths of an inch drill, just because uh, that's where the USB cable is going through. Job done. Slightly messy hole because it is going through basically, what is that then? It's, it's kept what we'd call a... Hardboard here, but it's got other names around the world. Uh, do I want to use a black Poundland lead or I want to use a white one? The white one's longer. I got this today. I think it's possibly got thicker cores. That might be quite good. Maybe I should compare the two of them. I shall compare the two of them. That's the best bet, isn't it? So that's that one. And this one. So these are just dollar store or pound shop USB leads. I like them for powering projects like this because you can literally just uh, chop the... So it doesn't matter if you get the one for the iPhones or for the Android, you, you just chop that plug off if you're not using it and that you keep the main plug here. So let's chop this off at full length so that can go out the way and that can go out the way. I did consider the idea of putting a micro USB socket on this board, but it's complicated a bit by the fact that it would have to stand off at right angles and there, that usually results in sort of weaker connection. Uh, let's take a look down the end of these, which they both look pretty much the same. I'm going to choose the black one because it's quite stylish. It kind of fits this uh, whole mysterious blue LED thing. Can blue LEDs be mysterious? They are relatively mysterious. Am I going to regret this because I've already started regretting this because as before the uh the fabric coating is not one to go through the hole there it goes it's fine it's done it and for the strain relief i'm going to rely on the fact that this the cable is folding up the back of the circuit board then it's being split out to two wide soda pads so let's strip this and then we'll check the polarity before we go tacking it on because we don't want to tack it on and find the polarity is wrong you just never know with that uh, cheapy cables. This would be better stripped with something like this, I think. Let's aim for that hole there and see if that does it. Yes, it did. So we've got nice vivid red and black here. That's nice. Some of them have, uh, they skimp on the, uh, the amount of pigment in the cable and you just get sort of pink and, uh, pink and sort of grey power cable. So I'm cutting the green and white ones off and I'm stripping the red and black, which are the power, they're the ones we want. And I will uh, tin them right now, but then I'll check the polarity with a meter. Fortunately in this instance, because there's a resistor per, per LED, it doesn't pose a huge risk of damaging the LEDs if uh, you were to power it up, uh, particularly at 5 volts, because uh, 
in the case of these flashing LEDs, even if there's a protection diode in the chip, polarity protection, it's not going to uh, suffer damage because the resistor is in series to limit the current. So now I'm going to stuff this into a USB power bank. Here's one I got at Powerland today. Interestingly, it's a 1.2 amp hour. Comes in a bag instead of the, the box like the other ones. And it measured, it took a charge of just over 1.2 amp hour, which is pretty good. Let's get the meter on. If this says positive 5 volts, or thereabouts, that's good. If it says negative 5 volts, the polarity is wrong. It says positive 5 volts, or thereabouts. That's excellent. The polarity is correct in the cable. That's nice. I was going to mention something else there, and it has just shot right back out of the mind. So I shall solder these on. This one could go to here. And this one can go to here. Looking good. And that should be ready to go. Is it going to fit into the frame? That uh, should fit into the frame. Yes, it fits into the frame. I shall carefully dress this cable up as I pull it back in, because this is going to be the strain roof for the cable. I shall squish that down. Fold the little panty wings in. Oh, that's a bit of a bad design there, isn't it? The, the, where the hanging hook is, the uh, the clips kind of in that position. Doesn't matter though. Still looking quite smart already, isn't it? I think I like the idea of this one being sideways though. But it's just going to be standing on a shelf anyway. So let's give it a test. Let's zoom down on this. And we'll see how it looks. So initially all the LEDs should light up in sync. They do. I think uh, it's hard to say. Looking at the, looking at this one, it, they did look in groups. I wonder if there was some devious uh, bit of software running that, or if it was just these. I'm going to have to take a look back at that and see if I can detect any sort of, well, ultimately. I'd have to actually frame off each LED. Unfortunately, this video is moving. Oh, sorry, I'm off, off shot. This video is moving at that point. There's only a bit short time when they're all revealed can this person moves to the side. Oh, that's tricky. But uh, it's looking all right. I mean, it's looking slightly restless. I was going to say I'll turn the voltage down to get the brightness down, but it's running off a little power bank, so that's not so, that's not so easy. Uh, let's power off this, and we'll see roughly what sort of current it's taking, although it's going to be jumping up and down. So I shall plug it in here. So I would say it peaked, worst case, about probably about 500 milliamps, which does kind of relate because um, I was going for roughly 10 milliamps, these LEDs. That's looking all right. And then once it all knocks out of sync, the, uh, the current will go down a bit. But, you know, on a standard one amp power supply, this isn't going to tax it too much. So uh, there we go. I'm not sure. Well, how would you describe this? It does look like retro computers. They were just absolutely covered in LEDs. In fact, you know what? Let's turn the light off. Let's take the... Ex uh, no, let's not take the exposure off. It doesn't need it. And let's zoom up on that. Oh, too much zoom. Too much zoom. Yeah, I think that looks all right. What do you reckon? Let me know in the comments below what you think of that. Uh, keep in mind that this circuit board can also be used for just static LEDs laid out in either patterns or just a random pattern, which the original circuit board was. It was like reds, yellows and greens just laid out randomly. But this is a bit restless, but as a set dressing, it would look quite good. It's got that sort of retro computer feel. So that's all right. Uh, the light is about to come back. Mind yourself. Um, so I would say that's a a decent result. I like that. And it's quite easy to put together. The resistors look okay in the front, and you may notice I put them all in the same way round. And it was quite easy to assemble. So all in all, I would say that's not too bad at all. That's a, a nice little project.